So, okay, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the first iteration of Friday Hacks for this method. And thanks for joining us online. So today our first talk is on multiplayer programming with Mirror in Unity. So the speaker, Paulus, he is a master student at the University of Leeds. He's studying computer science and specializes in game development. And he has created a few multiplayer games on his own. So with this, let us welcome Solus. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, let me turn on the presentation. Sorry for uh, being a bit late. I had a meeting. Uh, okay. I'm just going to share my screen then. Uh, can you enable the share screen? Yeah, can you answer? Okay, you should be working. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to make a presentation about multi, uh, multiplayer games, particularly in Unity using a mirror library. So about a little bit about me. Uh, I'm studying bachelor's and master's in computer graphics at Leeds University. I've uh, been developing for six years and currently working with the DNS uh, NSX experience in Singapore with Changi. Uh, we're creating a multiplayer game currently for almost two years coming at this point. And lastly, I'm doing bachelor's project on Ocean Station using Fast Fury Transform. Uh, so tomorrow, what we're doing, if somebody wants to join, you can just like uh, scan this QR code. Uh, and then you have to film the form. And yeah, it would be nice if somebody joined us. OK, so what we'll cover today. We're mainly going to cover like mirror library, UDP and TCP, server and client validations, and basic implementation, implementation examples. So what is mirror networking library? So first of all, it's a system for building multiplayer capabilities for Unity games. It's high, really high level and uh, it's extremely easy to use. It handles everything that you need. And basically what happens, you just have to assign attributes and it does all the work for you. So not a lot of low level programming. And later you're gonna see what I mean by that. So before we start, uh, I just want to introduce you to a new concept. I don't know how familiar you are with networking and multiplayer games. But I suggest an instance of a game which all other players connect to. And the clients are just an instance that connect to the server. Um, so, um, so what's the difference between dedicated and host servers? I want to take this because Unity is uh, can handle both. It can handle uh, dedicated servers and it can handle host servers. So dedicated server is just an instance of the game that only runs to act as a server. So it just handles the server side things and doesn't care about the client side. The host server is both client and server. So what happens when a player hosts the game, it creates a, like a server inside his computer. And uh, this is really, encap really greatly encapsulated in uh, mirror and they made that uh, creating a host server and dedicated server will almost this use almost the same architecture. Communication protocols. So before we start, uh, I assume you know all what is communication protocols, but if not, the communication protocols a system of rules that allow two or more entities of communication system to transmit in, uh, information. And we have two most popular protocols, which is TCP and UDP protocols. And they account most of the internation, uh, internet uh, package transmissions. So TCP is more is a connection oriented. Uh, oh yeah, next. So TCP is more connecting to one uh, person and having like a, connection between it. Uh, we use it mostly for like a file trans uh, file tra uh, 
transferring web browsing and emails. UDP is more like you can use the same as uh, TCP where you connect to the one person, but there's uh, other features as broadcasting and multicasting. And um, UDP is more fast. However, it's less reliable. It loses some packages. So uh, yeah, uh, okay. So uh, UDP is more fast, but it's less reliable. And sometimes it loses the packages, which is not really great for some scenarios. TCP, on the other hand, is it never loses the packages. If a client doesn't receive them, uh, TCP protocol just resends basically to them. So it's always reliable, but it's a bit slower. So that's the thing. So when creating a multiplayer game, you have to choose between TCP and UDP. And mostly it comes to the, uh, comes to the uh, few options is like a uh, few categories. I mean, uh, how fast you want uh, your game to run? Does it like require low latency? How reliable you want to have information? Maybe you're gonna lose some packages or not. So for example, for UDP, um, UDP uses mostly FPS games because you need like a pixel, uh, you need fast, you need fast transmissions. If you want to shoot something, you want to shoot at that moment. And it doesn't really matter if you lose few packages in a while because most, most uh, first person shooters uh, allow clients to move uh, and shoot on their own authority. And basically, then a server tries to predict where uh, a player is going to be, if it's going to be there or there, like when, when it comes to walking. Uh, TCP is more for, for like strategy games. Um, when the, the reliable data transmission really needs to be there and you can't lose any packages. So basically you choose UDP if you, uh, you don't care about uh, if you're going to lose a few packages and you need like a fast, sl uh, small latency and TCP if you need reliability, basically. Um, so UDP and TCP in Mirror. So in Mirror, we use transports and transport is basically a technology used for sending and receiving data between server and client in a multiplayer game. So for UDP transports, we have KCP and ignorance. And for TCP, we have telepathy and WebSocket. WebSocket is used for the browse games. Okay, so all of that theory out, uh, I want to have like a scenario how a multi-player game would like act basically. So imagine we have this a game where a uh, players can move they can eat this egg and that's it basically. So we now we start a scenario with client and server and client two being quiet because nobody is transmitting any information. And let's assume we want to move here to this direction. So we ask server, hey, can I move to the can I move to this point? And then we wait and we wait. And suddenly the server says, yeah. Okay, you can move here. Everything checks out. There is no obstacles, no nothing. You can move. So the client one moves. And uh, while the client one moves, he transmits his position every second, every to the server. And he's like, okay, I'm just going to broadcast this into everyone, to every client. Uh, and uh, the bro he broadcasts to client two at this point because that's the only one left not knowing where the client one uh, is. So, yeah. and then for example, let's uh, say that client wants, wants to eat this egg and the server after get a uh, request to eat the egg, it says, yeah, you are close enough to the egg and uh, yeah, you can eat the egg. So yeah, he eats the egg, it gets a little bit bigger the egg was humongous and when he eats the egg the server says like uh yeah hey everyone client one ate the egg 
I hope everyone knows that. And yeah, the client can see that the client one got bigger. And what happens when somebody wants to cheat? That's why it's important to validate everything on the server side. So for example, client says, can I eat this egg? And of course the server says like, what egg? There is no egg. You can't eat that. Um, so the last part of this, I want to like go through the code scenario. And uh, before going to code scenario, does anyone have any uh, any questions while we went through it here? I know there was not a lot of programming, but the, the part is coming. So before we go, uh, does anyone have any questions? Okay. So let's imagine client one egg eating code. So what happens, there's a, basically five things. We press E to eat egg. We send message to server. Server checks if egg is still there and if it's close enough to the player. Server allows players to eat egg, increases player HP and broadcasts to everyone that the egg was eaten. The player is now bigger. Client two sees the client one with more HP. So basically that's all that happens when uh, we want to use some interactable. So I have this, I'm just gonna move this away, please. Okay, I hope you can see the, the code. I have a simple, um, basically here I have a simple scenario. It's just a template pseudo code, so. What we have here is basically a public. Uh... Oh, can I ask uh, how many of you are uh, know the Unity and familiar with C sharp? Is there anyone that is not really familiar with this? Yeah. Okay. So a few of them don't know, I guess. Um, okay, so basically this is C-sharp code and we have a class player that is responsible for holding few things. It can hold like public in HP, it can hold like public float speed. So it just holds some variables. And then we have event that is triggered when some when the player presses E keyboard. So when the player presses E, it finds the nearest food uh, one unit away and eats the food. And then we have public void eat, it basically checks if the food is not null, if it exists, and then it increases the HP. And later it destroys the food, so it's gone. There's some function get nearest food. Um, and then there's like a food class that has HP and egg class that inherits from food. Uh, is uh, everything clear at this point? Anyone has questions? Because I'm going to go now into the multiplayer part. How to transform this single player code into multiplayer code. Um, okay, if nobody has the questions, yeah, I can start. So first thing you need to import is uh, mirror, so import mirror so basically you import this library and instead of using model behavior you're going to use network behavior so this already makes this class associated with some network identity and when you create this network behavior it will automatically create you another another component net identity basically it just says this player has identity in the network Let's say that. And let's go to our first part, which is on key pressed. So now we need to transform this part somehow into the network. So currently we just find the nearest food, one unit away. We eat the food. Uh, when we eat the food, we increase the HP and we destroy the 
food, basically. So first of all, it would be nice to request this eat for the server because we need to say, hey, we pressed uh, E. We need to send, uh, now the second step is we need to send a message to the server. Say, hey, server, uh, like, hey, server, I want to eat this food. So how do you make that this code will be executed at the server? So with my mirror library is pretty easy. You add command attribute. This basically says this function uh, uh, will be invoked on server if client requests. So now we have this command and it's a convention. If you have a command, you have to add CMD. It's just a convention. So now we have command food. So basically what happens when we say command eat, we say, hey server, I want to eat this food. And this code will be executed on the server side. So server is, takes the food, it eats and increases the HP and destroys the food. However, the problem is that this thing here increases the HP only happens at the server. It doesn't broadcast to anyone and it destroys the food on the server. So if we just run this on the client side, nothing will happen. You will still have the same uh, HP and the food be not destroyed because this is on the server. So how can we transmit this? So we can create another function uh, with attributes uh, target RPC. Basically, this is uh, attributes uh, from the server. So let's just finish the function, private void. RPC eat eat food. So uh, so okay. Um, we have this attribute target that this function can only be invoked on the server, and the the server requests a client to run this this uh, class uh, this function. So instead of saying HP food, uh, oh, actually it's missing a few things. It's a network, network connection, target and food. So basically instead of having HP plus equals food, now we just say target eat. And because we inherit from network behavior, we have net identity identity connection to client and pass the food. Uh, so we basically tell, uh, hey client, everything was okay. You can eat the food now. And basically we send, and this, uh, the player executes this code basically, and that's it. Um, is this understandable at this point? Does somebody have any questions? Okay, so if everyone understands, it's okay. Uh, so we have this target RPC, and the other problem is that we still destroying the food on the server side. We don't destroy on the client side. So let's just have this HP. So to destroy object on the all uh, servers on the all clients, we basically just use instead of game object destroy which basically destroys this food. We say uh, network server destroy game object. And this destroys this food. But you have to remember that uh, this food is still not on the network because it inherits from mono behavior. So 
just have to use the network network behavior. And then you can destroy this on all the clients. So let's see what we have here. So on key pressed, uh, when the player presses key, it gets the nearest food and it tells the server, hey, can I eat base can you execute this function on the on your server? So we pass press E to eat egg, send message to server. So we send message to the server with the food that we want to eat this food. The server looks if the food is not null. If it's null, then it returns. But basically, if everything is okay, it contacts the player again by accessing be more maybe intuitive if I do this, this dot net identity connection to clients. It uh, contacts this player by getting uh, his connection to client and passing the food. And this uh, will be executed on the client side. And then we use foo.destroy that contains network server dot destroy game object that will destroy uh, this object on every player uh, site. However, there is a problem. Uh, uh, the problem is that server checks the egg if it's close enough to the player. We will go into this validation, but client two sees the client one with more HP. In this scenario, client two will not get any information that uh, client one ate the egg. It will just see the egg was destroyed, but the client one won't increase his HP, even though the client one sees and the server sees that the HP is increased. So instead of maybe using target RPC, what well, we can use, uh, we can uh, use client RPC, RPC. And basically this is the same as target RPC, the only difference that we brought cast to everyone. So RPC, eat, and then we have, let's pass, play, uh, let's pass food. And then we increase. The problem with this is, let's pass this here. But the problem with the client RPC is that everyone at this point will increase their HP. And that's not what we want. Uh, because, oh yeah. I'll go back here. I forgot to add HP. Anyways. Uh, the the problem is that everyone will increase the their HP. So let's look what we have here. We say we get the food, we contact server says, oh, I want to eat this food. The server validates oh, if the food exists and then it increases the HP for this player that requested. And then it trans, uh, transmit this information to every client because this, uh tells every client to run this method so every client runs this hp but that's obviously not correct because we only want this ran on the on this player and the other clients uh have to get that information that that specific client uh got hp we shouldn't uh we shouldn't like increase everyone's hp so what we can do we can a bad player and check uh, if uh, the pl past player equals equals to this. Let's say if it's not equals to this and if it's not equals to, to this player, then we return. If this is the, the player that requested, we increase the HP basically. And by doing this, Everything is going to work, but you can tell that this is pretty tedious because 
you need to validate here information. Then you need to validate here. And the, the functions to do such a simple thing, like starts piling up. And from my experience, it's like gonna pile and pile and making multiplayer game is like making two games, one for the server side and one for the client side. So this is not the best way to do it, in my opinion. Hopefully, Mirror has really cool feature called sync variables. For example, you can add attribute here. So basically what this attribute does, uh, well, what this basically attribute does is that this variable specifically will be automatically synced to every client, to every cl uh, client automatically after it changes. The only caveat is that this variable can only be changed by the server. So no client can change this. So to get this changed, client has to say, hey, I want to eat this food. Can I eat it? And then the server checks if everything is okay and says like, yeah, you can eat. So increases the HP of this player. And later it destroys the apple as per usual. So in my opinion, this is the best way to do it. These things, sorry, excuse me. These things are less usable, but they still have a lot of usage. But when you're gonna program with mirror, a lot of things are just gonna be automatically synced. That's why I really like about this library. Before moving on, uh, does anyone have any questions? Okay, so let's remove this. Uh, and currently what we have, just gonna repeat myself, just in case if somebody missed. When player presses E button, we, got, we get the nearest food. Uh, we request the server, can I eat this food? We check if everything is okay. We increase the HP, which will be automatically synced because it's a sync var, and then we destroy the food. However, now arises different issues. For example, hacking. What if the player says like, oh, I want to get the nearest foods in this distance, basically. This is allowed because this is run on the client side. So everything that is run on the client side is not controlled by the server. And if we get the run this on the client side, we get, for example, at this distance, any food that exists in the video game. And then we pass to this uh, eat command. And basically, uh, and basically the server is gonna like, oh, you got me a food, it's not null. Okay, it's valid. However, we know that the client one is cheating by increasing the, the units. And so with this commands, when we request uh, to a server, we always want to validate the information. For example, to validate this, we can call our, uh, we can cast our, uh, we can check by ourselves by having the same function, get nearest food at one. And if it's not equal to the food that the player sent, we return. So this will prevent anyone hacking into like eat the food they were not supposed. So this is the validating part. Server checks if egg is still there and if it's close enough to the player. Okay. So now uh, let's say we want, after we eat something, we want to say, hey, uh, uh, we want to say, hey, I ate just that food. Let's say, imagine that this little, little, well, big rabbit, he, he has like a bubble here and says, hey, I ate an egg. So how can we do this? 
So there's a few options. So one way would be, uh, as per usual, is to create a target RPC. Target RPC. Mm. Public white uh, target uh, tell. And then let's have a string words. And let's just debug. Uh, let's say that, I don't know, some dialogue box dot text equals words. And then, uh, yeah, I again forgot it's network, uh, network connection target string words. So let's say like that. And then after we eat, we trigger the target tell, we cast connect connection to client, you ate the food and gain HP, for example. So this would be, this would trigger this uh, function at the player that casted this uh, command. And it say, uh, you ate the food and gave for HP. Uh, but the problem is that we want to show this to every client. We want to show to the client one and client two. And at this point, it will only show to client one because it's the only client that uh, receives this message because it's target RPC and this targets only one client that we specify. So, okay, this is probably not the best thing to do. You could act, you could probably just say target tell and get some, some like a player manager. When you get like, get other players, you probably would need like a for loop and cast this target tell multiple times to every target. But this is not really good practice of code writing, so don't do that. So let's change to client RPC. Client RPC. Let's change this to RPC. Targets all clients at this point. All clients. Okay. Um, RPC tell, and we don't need this network connection target because it targets every single client. And we can say RPC tell, I ate the food, for example. So this point, it will be problematic because if we say that every client uh, ate the food, every client will have a pop-up uh, dialogue that is saying, oh, I ate the food, I ate the egg. And that's not what you want. So we probably want to pass like a player, player who ate the, and the, who ate the, who ate the egg. And we check if, if this equals player not equal player, we return. So now we tell everyone that, hey, cast this. Hey, everyone say that I ate the food. And on the client side, the client will run this function. And we pass, yeah, let's this. and we pass here a player. And, and basically every client will say, oh, am I, am I this player? If they are not, it will just return from the function and it will run this dialog box only for client one. Well, as you can see, it still like introduces unnecessary, a lot of unnecessary things in my opinion, but it's a valid thing to do. It's really a valid thing to do. So the other option is to boop, boop, boop. Instead of this, there is a really cool feature on the mirror. We basically uh, we basically hook um, a function, and this function will be automatically triggered 
when somebody uh, when somebody's HP increases. So now we basically create a new function void on HP change all HP new HP. So okay, so we basically create a new function and basically. Uh, this old uh, it has two inputs. One is old HP and the other is new HP. And this, uh, whenever the HP uh, changes by server changing the HP, this will be triggered too. And because uh, it only triggers, so before I continue more, so how we would be, uh, we would have on the client one, we would have client one and client two. On client, uh, we would have these objects. Client two and server. So I should have started with this, but client one is gonna have client one and client two because he sees one client and client two. The client two will have the same and client uh, and the server will have the same, same objects. So this function is gonna be only triggered for the client that their HP was changed. So basically when server changes uh, HP, for example, uh, of a player client one, it will change only for the, it will basically trigger this function on both clients, uh, HP change triggers, triggers, and here it triggers. So this is only triggers on the client side. It doesn't trigger on the server. And we don't need to check if this player is correct because it automatically player uh, triggers only on the player that their HP was, uh, uh, automatically triggers on the player that their HP was changed. And we can just simply say, uh, whenever the HP changes, we have our dialog box. I just say dialog show, HP change from this. And this will automatically show this dialog box only on client one. Uh, does anyone have any questions? No? Okay. Uh, so there is a thing. For example, uh, so coming back to sync var that automatically synchronizes the attributes. You can apply this for everything. Like uh, sync vars for speed, for floats. You can like have a bull that is like is alive and just synchronize this sync variable. So yeah, it applies for everything. So the only uh, different, uh, the only thing that, that doesn't apply is to uh, list arrays and dictionaries. But for that, we have a link uh, sync list. I think so. It's called yeah, called sync list. And basically, it's the same as here. This can be only changed by the host. Host only. So, I mean, server can only change this. And this will transmit it to everyone. So this is basically how to convert like simple, uh, simple uh, single player code into uh, multiplayer game. So basically this is the end of the example. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, if anyone has any questions, y'all can also post it onto the PGN Hall q and We'll have a short q and session later after this. Give a few minutes to think about it.
Okay. Uh, let's end with this uh, simple example. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of our game, how it looks with the multiplayer settings and everything, and how it works. So it's going to be just a brief uh, example. Let's, let me turn on this. So okay, this is like uh, our project that we created with Yangi, basically. So when you come to creating a multiplayer game in Unity, you basically want to uh, uh, download the package manager, or you need to like go to asset store, but they disabled now. So you're gonna need to access from the Unity, Unity asset store. And it's gonna be here. You can actually get from GitHub, you can get from doesn't really matter, just here, you can see. So when you downloaded it, basically you need to set up a few things. First of all is Network Game Manager. And this is the main script. It's like the manager of the network that basically is responsible for connecting players and uh, getting a, like a necessary information. So it's like connecting and disconnecting players. Uh, so if I'm going to go here, just wait until it loads. So basically, Network Game Manager, you inherit from Network Manager, that it gives you a lot of events. It gives you from... Uh, pa, 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 pa. It gives you the start connection as client, connection... <laughs> on client transport disconnect and basically all these things. If I find the uh... so okay, so basically this is uh, the very basics of this on the, on start server. You basically instantiate things and you use uh, other networking things. That didn't cover because they're more advanced. But basically, on start server, you instantiate whole server. Then on create player, you create when somebody joins, this is, uh, this is being triggered and you create a player. So, for example, we take the player name, the player controller, and all those sorts of things. So, basically, first of all, you set up your network manager. A network manager takes a transport. And the, that's the thing we were talking about. So if I'm going to, because this is a web, develop, web browser game, we're using simple web transport. Um, but you can choose any, like KCP transport. You can choose telepathy transport. And you don't really need to like configure here. A lot is just like some ports. You just configure ports, and then you basically drag that thing into the uh, you basically drag uh drag it into here accident but basically you drag this for example you drag here and that's it automatically oh this is authenticator here is the transport it basically connects everything um so after you set up the network game manager and you set up the uh, transport, you're basically good to go. Uh, and it also basically when you uh, the network game manager and you have the transport, you then handle the player connections. So as I showed, when somebody, uh, when somebody joins the on create player event is, uh, is like uh, instantiated and basically we create this object and we call this network server add player for connection and basically what this function does it creates all the uh, 
this player on every on every client so it's everything synced and after that you basically have your game logic so basically that's the whole library if you want to know more about this library they have really fantastic documentation jesus has really great uh documentation documentation you can read everything here there's a few YouTubers that have really good tutorials. So if you're interested in this, you uh, probably want to check them out. It's easier, but they have fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, pa -pa 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 documentation and you should check it out basically. So yeah, that's it. Any questions? All right, yeah. So now we move on to the Q and A session. Right now we have around two questions, so hold on, let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. All right. So the first question we have, uh, just curious, any reason you personally prefer to use site mail versus other networking frameworks like Photon? So basically why i started learning mirror over photon i remember checking photon and i don't know at this time because i didn't look into it for a long time but at that time it was paid thing so it was more expensive uh i think it had like a free plan until some point but from uh some point you have to transition to paid plan so i just went with the open source uh project and it's really free you just have to pay for your own servers and that's it. All right. So, all right, move on to the next question. All right. So, uh, what is, in your opinion, the hardest challenges when you're writing multiplayer code for actual production games? So, okay, there's a quite few annoying things. So, the one, the biggest general fit when you write the uh, multiplayer game is that you basically write two programs. You write from the server side and from the client side. And you always have to remember that these are kind of two separate things. And you always like switching between server and client and trying to make this code basically not be two separate programs because that would take a lot of time. You just have, you just think like, okay, I do this on server on client. Now I have to request the server. So I validate input on the client, then I validate on the server. And this is just the, this tedious job is like draining. Um, the other uh, hard point is that you have to always account pay. And there's like so many annoying things that could happen, especially, sorry, especially if you're using event patterns. So basically, uh, for example, let's say, <laughs> uh, so the most annoying thing is probably when you, uh, you, for example, uh, you request to eat this apple and then you wait uh, for the command eat, uh, you eat, uh, the server says, yeah, okay. You can eat the food. It destroys, it changes the HP, which then sends the signal to your client that, Hey, your HP was changed, you can do something. And because of these little delays, you can have like some sort of code that basically, I um, can't really think of some single, but we have so many occasions. Let me think fast. Uh, mm, so, okay. Uh, oh, so one of the things is like, I can't really think of a scenario here, but there was uh, many times, like uh, a lot of things that you just have to like, after yeah, sending some command, you just have to like, hey, just, just wait, just like wait a few seconds. Just wait for a few seconds for, oh, and then check, uh, just wait for a few seconds if you do something, something else that you need to know when the HP uh, changed and you're not always like available to the option of this like sync bar. 
So that's the annoying part that sometimes you expect to be information there and it's not actually there because the internet is slow. And the other annoying, really annoying part is that you have to account every delay. For example, I'm developing from the France UK, this video game, and our servers are at Singapore. So some errors that I experience, she will never experience those errors because they only occur because there's way bigger delay point. So yeah, I think that's the, the most difficult part about multiplayer games. All right, thanks for sharing that. Uh, okay, so next one, what networking solution do you recommend? So like Mirror versus other frameworks like Photon or Netcode or Game or Jet if I want to convert from single player game to a multiplayer one? Hmm. Not really understanding this question. What network solutions do you recommend? What network solutions do you recommend for mirror? What do you mean by that? Versus other frames? I don't really I, understand. This I think what they mean is like it's just comparing mirror and other frameworks like the one the photon or netcode. I, I don't think they meant for mirror. Do they mean like uh what they would oh was the what would I recommend to choose between like mirror photon and netcode? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, okay. So of course I'm gonna be a little biased because uh uh I've been developing with mirror like for three years at this point. Uh so I would definitely say go with mirror, but all these codes are like like these frameworks. So mirror is really good for like a, for smaller games where there's like a thick five, six, seven players, not a lot. It a bit struggles to handle more players. I saw some people doing MMOs where at the same point they host 250 concurrent connections at the same location and it handled just fine, but it needs more working. And mirror uh, recently have been trying to optimize their um to optimize their framework which is good the photon i can't really tell uh, about photon a lot because i didn't reuse it a lot but i heard that it's really highly performant it's really good architecture and if you're looking for like a high-end networking library that's a really good thing to go for uh the net code is there was like uh there was, I think, Unity once, but they basically uh, made it obsolete and now they're creating a new one. So it's an option to get that network, but it's really new one. And uh, it's not really tested. There's, I heard there's a lot of bugs, not a lot of features. So for Netcode, there still needs like few years to go to get really to that, to go to the production. But you still can create the multiplayers with netcode. So, yeah, I would recommend if you want like something open source and completely free, go with Mirror. If you want like something more professional, I guess with po a Photon. Oh, and what I really like about Mirror is that, of course, it's open source, and there are so many times where. And for example, the shower recruit, we wanted to, we needed to change something in the, in the code of mirror, because we wanted to do some illegal stuff that mirror was not allowing us. So it was really nice. It's like open source and we can just go and change it or add some features that were not yet added basically. All right. Uh, okay. I guess we have, this is a very short question. Oh, okay. What's the favorite? Uh, the favorite game I made. Whew. I have a lot of video games I made. They're quite small because I really enjoy going to game jams. And but I think multiplayer games is probably this Java recruit. Uh, I can actually show you. 
So we've been working on this game for two years, almost. I think it's like 1.6 years. And I'm just gonna mute the sound. And we had really fun. I had at least a lot of fun programming this and being in Singapore was really fun. So yeah, it, it was the most fun I had developing video games with this. And let me show you. Uh, basically this is the waiting room and players can connect here. I can actually just play alone, but I'm not gonna be able to execute many of the cards because I'm alone. And yeah. It's just a simple card game that we programmed. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I think I, you're not sharing the screen, but... Oh, <clears throat> why did you say? I forgot to share. <laughs> <laughs> you waited for me to... Okay. Okay, again. This is the game I recreated. It's almost done. Still need some little polishing in there. But I muted the sound so to not annoy you guys, but you basically can create a game. Uh, we using for like, because uh, we can't afford really to, uh, we can't really afford to spend a lot of on the servers. We used actually LRM solution, which basically uh, when we, when I started hosting the game, I create a server on my computer and then pl when play players can join from this uh, game ID. So when I create the, uh, the server on my PC, all the highly computational things will be done on this PC. And basically how we communicate with other players, we have like little relay server in Singapore and the uh, all the information goes to the relay server and it transmits to the other person. So we basically pay for transmitted data between clients. So that's pretty cool. And we tested $5 server, six, our multiplayer game can handle 150 concurrent connections, which is extremely a lot for a really low price. Uh, and it's just a simple card game. There actually, Shangi was in this company before me and they created like this card game physical. And I went to, uh, to this company I was like, hey, we can make like a multiplayer game and there were alerts. So this is basically after almost two years of developing. And majority of time was spent just finding bugs that wouldn't be normally there if it was single player game. So yeah, I think that's the the fun, the most fun game I created because I had the most fun programming because the everyone in my team was really fun to work so yeah all right so thanks for joining us and for the very insightful talk so yeah thanks for joining us. Um, so next up